but there is a sense that we are all held and we don't realize it. Why don't we realize it? Because we've done so much with our mental conceptualization that we miss what's right under our noses, what we can directly know through dropping into what our current experience is right now. Mm -hmm. And if you and everybody who listens to this can do that, you will. what you will find is holding. You don't have to be dying to find that. It's a given. And, and that dropping into it means if you happen to, to feel like a, a, a like you're not a great person today, if you feel selfish today, it, it doesn't just include all the it's if you drop a lot of people are going to drop into themselves right now. And uh, who knows, they just finished watching some disgusting porn on the Internet or they've just gone through a three day binge of playing Xbox or they've they're, uh Maybe they just finished uh, their second pack of cigarettes for the day. They feel dizzy. They don't feel he- very good, you know, and w- but you're saying that that you shouldn't judge that. I'm saying that we need to understand that the human being is composed of layers and layers and layers of identities. And the, some of the more superficial ones are ones that we use to charge and discharge. We've been doing that since we were infants, pooping in our pants. Yeah. And so it's inherent in us. And some people are still at that level. They want to charge and discharge. Right. So... That's okay. They can charge and discharge. There are just a lot of other levels, and they don't even know this. A lot of people don't realize there are there are many other levels. I've never heard that model charging and discharging. I, I so so you're saying that the oh, th- when people smoke or engage in whatever addictive behavior or letting off steam behavior, that's a form of just discharging energy. Yes, it's a very primitive form of being human. Charging and discharging. You see it in jellyfish, too. Yes. I, I, yeah, I guess so. And the human being actually has the potential to be vastly more than meets the eye. And so if we spend all of our lives charging and discharging, we don't get to know that. There, it's okay. But Nothing you're... wrong with that. But yeah, I, I just... I guess I want to go back to this idea of, like, going into your... I'm just... You go, what you what you started off saying is that you you you're ex- kind of experiencing the totality of yourself. You're experiencing the regrets. You're experiencing this higher. You're experiencing this entire spectrum. And when a person drops down into their beingness, and they're honest with themselves, and they see that where they're at is not is just at a primitive jellyfish level. I've certainly been there. What? Do th- what should they do? What what should they do in that moment to experience this sense of being held that you're talking about? Well, maybe it's not realistic for them to say, hmm, I'm charging and discharging. Now I want to feel held because we don't have any control over this. There's mm. That's one thing that I'm finding is that all of this is happening to me. It's not me mentally trying to will something to happen. But what I can do and say is say, ah, look. You are doing a bit of charging and discharging right now, aren't you? And sure enough, this very morning, I did some charging and discharging while you guys went to breakfast. Do you know what I did? Oh, boy, no. Well, this is St. Patrick's Day, so I looked up Duchess Kate to see what she did on St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) Nothing but charge and discharge. (laughs) Total charge, total discharge. She got her foot caught in a grate. (laughs) She did. She got her foot caught in a grate. Was she... How does that immediately make the news? They, they, well, that's a different story entirely. But this is a fractal. What you're talking about here is that that, and and this is something that, um, it, I think when you say th- these are things that are outside of our control, it does seem that one thing that is within our control is where you want to place your attention. Yes, and so there is this happening right now in in the fractal of your life is that on one level you're dying your body's dying you're about to cease to exist as a human being you're about to 
go down that path that every single human being since the beginning of time has gone down. And there is an opportunity in, in that level for the most intense and amazing uh, melodrama, as Ramda says, if you want to plug into certain parts of that. And a lot of people, that's how they react to this extinction. A lot of people, they don't gracefully pass on. But also simultaneously within this fractal that's happening, you have just the absurdity of looking at Duchess Kate getting her foot stuck in a grate. That's still happening. That's going on no matter what. That level of the world is happening too. And then there's this deeper level that you're talking about, which is this being held, a luminosity. And then what you said earlier, which is this sense of being pulled into something vast. And all of these things are happening at once. They are all happening at once. They're happening to everybody at once. They're, everybody is, this is nothing new. It's just that I'm closer to, I know that I'm closer to death than you think you are, but you might be closer to death than, death than I am. They are happening in everybody. The potential is there all the time to recognize all of this. Yes. But when we get caught in the world, in the world culture, and we perceive ourselves to be that identity, it is impossible. That sets up a barrier to perceiving anything deeper that is right here shining in our hearts or in our faces. What would the world look like if by some miracle everyone simultaneously managed to get to the place that you're at right now without having to lose their physical body? What kind of world would we be in? It would be bright. And truly, I think that's an excellent question because I can tell you this. And this is not going to be a popular thing to hear. The vastness that I'm being pulled into, more specifically, is that my individuality, my sense of I individual identity is dissolving into the vastness where there are no boundaries. The individual identity that I have, therefore, wasn't all that real. Right. And so that's the thing that we can realize is the vastness is all there really is with all of its mysterious appearances and disappearances and dynamisms and uh, effulgences effulging out of the absolute so here's a here's a really interesting thing i had an idea this morning when i woke up early i first of all i wanted to see if my capacities to do my early morning studying were still with me and they weren't until I put my oxygen on but when I got my oxygen on there they were and I was able to hear things come tr come through me which is what I love so much and I had brought a big thick book with me to bed because what I wanted before I died, this is what I was saying, what I wanted before I died was to experience the absolute. Yes. The absolute dimension of reality, which is deeper than the non-conceptual, deeper than pure presence, deeper than pure awareness, deeper than the divine love, certainly deeper than the ego, the depths of the depths. So I said to myself, I want to experience this before I die. Mm. So I opened the book. And I intended to follow guidelines. One, two, three, four, five. And I thought that by the time you guys woke up, I would probably have gotten to the absolute. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> but what happened instead was far more interesting. Because what happened instead was a revelation to me that I'm already there. Ah. I don't need to work on this so hard. I'm already there. Right nothing to do it happened without my orchestrating one damn thing that's got to be that's a that's a for some people that's a little frustrating to hear 
because it's so counter to everything in our culture, which is that work hard, work hard, do the pull-ups, do the sit-ups, do the painful meditations, do the psychedelics, do the ayahuasca, all these things to do to get to this state and to hear you say that this is there's nothing to that you can do. Well, let me quickly say that when I talk about getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and doing my work from 5 o'clock until whatever time in the day that I can continue doing it, depending on what's been going on in my days, maybe 5 to 12, I don't know. Generally, it stops around noon. But I've done this every day for years and years and years. And the various things that are important, you start, you start where you are. So if I have to say I started, if I started with charge and discharge, which is not where I started. But let's, that's just one of the most primitive, so I just pulled that one out. You start where you are. You don't try to get to the absolute. You don't try to even think about what the absolute means. You just start charge and discharge. I can feel myself discharging right now. I can feel myself building a charge. And you are kind with yourself at that point. And you don't judge it and say, you lazy so-and-so, you shouldn't be charging and discharging. That will stop you cold. That's the, that's the barrier that will first stop you. And there are many, many, many barriers. I think some people are afraid to stop judging themselves. I think some people are afraid that if they stop judging themselves, that they need that constriction and they need that psychic barrier to shame themselves, to keep themselves from doing whatever the charging and discharging behavior is that they were judging themselves for in the first place. Well, they may. But if you look at that from another angle, you will see that what they're trying to do is maintain their being some infantilized adult. They're trying to be loyal to mama. They want her to come change their diaper. That's what they're looking for. And if that's what they're looking for, that's what they're looking for. That's where they're at. Yep. Loyalty to mama. You'd be amazed. So the judgment keeps, we hear, you blasted son of a bitch, you stupid failure, you goddamn blah, blah, blah. Yes. That, my friend, is loyalty to mother. It's also, I, there's a, an excellent, uh, I, I don't remember what university, they just put out a audio track so that you could hear what it's like to have auditory hallucinations as a schizophrenic from studying schizophrenics. They had an audio track of what that sounds like to be a schizophrenic and, and the voices tend to be, what's wrong with you? Look at you. You're stupid. You're dumb. You're stupid. It's like they've so, that thing that is inside people is actually for them mm -hmm. broken away and become an externalized form of judgment. That's a good way of putting it. And also that's true for many of us, people who are not diagnosed as schizophrenic, that that part of us has broken away and become an entity inside of us and outside of us that rules our lives with a very a variety of thumbs for example i know many people who have the golden spoon judgment oh that was a wonderful bowel movement what is that that's judgment it's positive judgment oh aren't you cute I, I love it when you do your eyelashes like that. That's judgment. Oh, I see. So you're, I, I, you lost me at bowel movement. The, you're saying that the mother is, um, if they had a mother that complimented their bowel movements as a kid, it gets into their head and they actually apply some kind of. And so they give themselves positive judgment all the time. Now that's a very popular Oh, approach. I see what you're saying. You people who are proud of their bowel movements. And their cute hair and their eyelashes. Right. And their precious dress. Right. Everything. Form of who judgment. Who is that? I have yet to, I don't think I've, I just. I think we were talking about somebody earlier this morning named, who has the initials KK. 
<laughs> you, mom, you can't. You jet. You're throwing a jab at the Kardashians on your deathbed. <laughs> All is hell. <laughs> I just soil my nest. <laughs> oh man. You know that you know that as a celebrity you have done something wrong if be on people on their deathbed or or zinging you. <laughs> it's pretty antithetical to what I'm I'm trying to help people awaken to. You know, so maybe she's a good example of what you can see that is the antithesis of of being awake and, and being a complete human being. She's probably not a complete human being. Well, maybe she's charging and discharging. She may, she may well be charging and discharging. And, and, and that's the thing, see, because, you know, here you are saying that we shouldn't apply judgment to ourselves, but now, now you're in the predicament of applying judgment to Kim Kardashian and I'm not judging you for that because God knows I there's a delight in judging I mean that's a this is a um, being friends with comedians uh, sometimes we'll get into philosophical conversations about enlightenment and uh, the idea of like gaining true happiness or getting to a place of non-judgment and for a lot of comics they're like yeah that's that's taking away one of my primary tools of crafting jokes is judging because it's fun it's fun to judge it's fun to look at uh, uh um it's like this is something nietzsche talks about which is this idea that we need something to overcome if we existed in a world where there were no kim kardashians and if we existed in a world where there were there was there were no no fools or oafs or dolts or people engaged in really basic level activities then there wouldn't be a pull-up bar there'd be no way for us to to be to differentiate well that's not going to happen because there are all these layers right so you don't even need to worry about that right. they're going to exist but the there are layers and our job is our job if we want to evolve if we want to evolve yes and i'm not saying that anybody that we've mentioned wants to evolve oh. like kim kardashian for example i don't know kim kardashian i avoid looking at her so yes. i don't even know but i'm saying that i want to evolve and I want to evolve to the extent that I can before I die. Mm. So what I learned to do is to delve more deeply into my judgment. And I get curious about it. And I inquire into it. What's this judgment? Who am I taking myself to be? And who am I taking this poor child, Kim Kardashian, to be? Yes. Right. Talk about a lost soul. She seems like a, a good example of a lost soul. A materialist. And I can have I can have compassion for her easily for somebody like that. So I take my judgment, which comes up anyway, whether I want it to or not. That's right. I am no saint. So I can take my judgment that comes up and instead of looking out there at Kim Kardashian, I can look at my judgment, the flavor of my judgment, and not only can I look at it, but I can know it directly. I can feel it in my throat. I can feel it in my heart. Mm. I can feel what part of me and what identity is judging. Is it a child judging this person? Is it an adult judging this person? What part of me is even thinking about Kim Kardashian yes. on a Sunday morning? Yes. But I can be curious about that rather than judgmental about it. Right. And that makes all the difference. 